Hey there, Sharon horn from here. Welcome to day 1,231 of What You Up To Now. Documenting my journey as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. And then I think I've mentioned that in 2021, I'm doing a little bit more of both, not just strictly online, a little more offline because I miss offline. And I think that COVID-19 has shown us that America, where I live, the United States, needs a lot more solid sound foundation in the areas that I've experienced in, which is primarily manufacturing. I, no, I can't say primarily manufacturing because I've been in lots of different industries, but many of them were in the manufacturing sector, producing products and services that people need and want uh, to make their lives better. So today I was sharing for Supersize Your Business, the, it, it, I usually share an idiom every day. And yesterday as I was researching, get the ball rolling, for idioms, I came across a little article from Inc. Magazine, it was back in, I think, 2015, about phrases you should use to sound more professional. I read the list, I thought it was interesting, wrote the list down. If I, if I think something's interesting, I usually capture it in one of these little notebooks and probably never go back and look at it, but I think the act of writing it down helps me to remember things better. Uh, my vision is kind of shot these days, so it's a, just another memory tool for me. So I wrote down the phrases and I shared them instead of another idiom today. I can find another idiom, of course, and I will be doing that again tomorrow. But I thought on the weekends it's kind of fun to have a change of pace and talk about something different. So I shared the phrases and talked a little bit about each one and then asked people to say, hey, do you use these phrases? Have you used them? Have you heard them? Do you think they sound sincere? Do they work for you or not? Because everything we do when we're learning to communicate and wanting to communicate better is all about is the person that we're talking to or communicating to, are they receiving the message like we're intending it to be sent? Because the, I would say that the biggest cause of breakdown in any business, any relationship, anything, almost always boils down to communication. If we could communicate and understand one another better, our marriages wouldn't fail. If we could communicate and understand one another, because we'd know in the first place if the person was right for us or not, because we would have communicated that. We would know and understand, do we have common core values? Do we match on the things that are really important? And that's what we'll base our the foundation of our relationship on and build it from there, etc. Same is true in building a business, building our business relationships. Do we have a solid foundation to build on? Do you have the skills that we need? Do I have some other skills that we need? Can we come together and create what it is that we want in the world? So I thought it was a fun little exercise, the phrases. Some of them, uh, I think I've probably used almost all of them before. I think every single one I've definitely used at some point in my life and in my career. Uh, did, they, did I use them to sound more professional? Well, not intentionally. Did I use them to communicate who I am and good manners and being polite? I would say yes. Um, are some of them probably dated now and old? Maybe, maybe not. But if you're curious about that, you can check out the Supersize Your Business page on Facebook and find those phrases. And it's today's uh, piece on that. Our, and our challenge, our 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that centers us was about success and the definition of success. And I actually really like this one because it says there's only one success, to be able to spend your life in your own way. And isn't that the truth? It's like, I feel about purpose. I spent a lot of years running around, looking for, studying, reading books on purpose. What's my purpose in life? What am I here to do? Who, you know, now it's who am I here to serve, but why Why do I exist? Why do we you know, have life? Da, 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 da. What's my purpose? And I felt like I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off because that's my chicken with the head cut off, trying to get an answer to a question that I always knew was within me anyway. Because every question, everything we want to know, we always have what we need inside of us to figure out the answer to that. So when we say, I don't know, I don't know, all we're doing is suppressing our overall understanding and knowing of what we are and are not capable of on the planet. So I do like that they recommended 15 phrases that you should not use are... Um, there was one that replaces, I don't know. Oh, let me look into that. Well, <laughs> I always would say, I don't know. Let me look into that. Or I don't have an answer for you on that right now. Let me look into that. Let me find out. You know, that's a, that's just a good communication to let people know. Hey, I don't know everything, but I'm going to follow up on that. And the article recommended that you don't say, I don't know. Now I agree with it in that. I think you don't say, I don't know 
because a lot of times we do know we just don't want to share that we know because we know it's not the thing that the person wants to hear and that's different than us saying I don't know how many people do you ask or talk to about well hey what do you want with respect to any topic their business their life their career their health their whatever you happen to be having a conversation about and they say oh, I don't know I don't know what I want unfortunately about 90% of the people on this planet don't really know what they want out of life what they want they have the big broad brush strokes we all want to make money we all want to survive we all want to be healthy we all want to be happy we all want to have good relationships but beyond that there's no detail to what they actually want and a lot of it I was thinking about this this morning and, and re I was going back over my corporate career and thinking about all of the negative stuff that had happened in my corporate career I don't know why sometimes you wake up in those moods and you're just reviewing certain things and I've been in corporate for over a decade and a half so it's a long time ago so I'm like I'm not sure why those things were coming up I think it was to show me that there's things that affect us and impact us on a subconscious level all the time that we're not even consciously aware of so obviously there's something in that group of things that I still haven't let go of completely and just flown it out of the water and said you know none of that matters now the truth is none of that even matters but I think I'm looking for a lesson that I learned throughout that corporate career that is pertinent to what I'm doing right now that I need to make sure that I'm paying attention to and that's why my brain was running through and reviewing those things today I haven't had time to think about it yet today in terms of what does it mean why was I thinking about that what what is the common thread what are the lessons that I learned in that series of events that the world is trying to show me uh, <coughs> and I actually think I know the message but it's not pertinent to the discussion so uh, I won't share it but I think it was really interesting that we say we don't know things but we actually do we just sometimes don't want to look at the answer we don't want to to realize oh my gosh I have created this whole series of nonsense in my life and if I had just figured it out on the first experience I wouldn't have had to have any of these other experiences I think that's part of what it's here to show me and that instead of being afraid of the next experience realize that you can trust yourself and it doesn't matter what those things those were all there to teach and show you something and you'll keep seeing the lesson at least in my experience I will keep seeing versions of the lesson until the, the light bulb goes off I have the epiphany and I actually get the lesson that I'm supposed to learn and maybe everybody isn't like that but back to the purpose thing because I got sidetracked I did all this studying all this reading read all the authors on purpose and the meaning of life and you know Eckhart Tolle's the you know present moment now learned a lot of really cool things but I didn't feel like any of it anybody's strategies anybody's frameworks anybody's systems anybody's way of defining my purpose actually helped me to define my purpose and it wasn't until one day I don't remember what I was doing probably nothing related to it purpose seeking at all and I just realized that my purpose is to be the best possible version of myself it's to experience this life my life as only I uniquely can that is my purpose that's my overriding overall purpose and I've known that all along that I just have to be myself and live my life to the best of my ability to make as many positive differences as I can in the world and to be, just be me and when I realized that it was just like this whole weight was lifted and then I thought you know what that's pretty much everybody on the planet's purpose is to just be themselves to to come to learn to grow to contribute in the ways that we possibly can and you know learn from our mistakes so we don't make them over and over again and just become the best version of ourselves we can possibly be and to to enjoy our experiences to actually have and live the experiences so that and just being ourselves and being the example is enough sometimes we look for us to do all these things we have this whole list of all these things that define success for us <laughs> and the truth is and that's why I liked the one today success is just to live life your own way the way that's right for you and so that reminded me of all the work and all the interesting study I'd done on purpose and only to realize that I hadn't read that answer from anyone it was just to be yourself it was just to figure out what works for you what feels good for me and and do that do more of that and then 
have the things that I want, actually identify and know what I want and go after those things and create my own life. So those are some kind of interesting ahas that I personally had today as I am ramping up and getting ready for granddaughter time. For the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be in charge of granddaughters and enlisted the help of my youngest sister. My mom just got out of the hospital and she was going to help me too, but uh, she is in no condition to help anyone. She had pneumonia and some throat thing that uh, I, she still can't talk. I'm going to go see her today, but I still don't think she can speak. So it's been very quiet around my mom lately. <laughs> anyway, that is what I'm working on. Uh, most of my projects and most of my coaching and most of my everything is very minimal for the next couple of weeks so that I can focus on the beautiful human beings that make my life such a joy. And uh, I'll still be doing my content. I have no idea what time. I will be mapping out today. Honestly, I'm, I'm telling you my strategy here. I'll be mapping out uh, my idioms for the next 15 days. I'll map those out and I'll have them. I won't have them researched because I don't really have time to and, or the desire to research 15 idioms today. I think uh, the process that works best for me is I, I pick an idiom, usually pretty at random, unless I'm going through a, a series. Like I think beginning of this year, I did... Uh, about 50 days or so and I was traveling so I did this for when I was traveling uh, I already had a list of like 50 to 60 idioms that were related to business now some of them I've done before because other I, I relate everything to business uh, and how to grow your business or supersize your business so I mapped those out and I just had a list of them that I could choose one from every day and then I would research it the night before so that I know a little bit about it and can talk about it uh, the next day. As, but this I'm going to do a little differently. I'm going to map out this is my idiom for the next 15 days whether I'm feeling it or not. A lot of how I pick my idioms is what do I feel like the, we should talk about now. That's how I picked them. Um, I would pick them randomly from a book of like 600 and some idioms initially. And then when the book ran out, because I made myself do all of them, I had to find other sources. And I just got a new uh, phrase book. Well, it's probably not new. It's probably 50 years old from my aunt and uncle. But it's fun to go back and revisit and see how many of the phrases and the idioms and things we use today are things that we used 50 years ago or 100 years ago or hundreds of years ago. Heck, half a lot of the things we say today still came originally from the Bible or from back thousands of years ago. And so it's really fun to, to realize that language is important and that it comes with us no matter what we're doing. Why? Because that's how we communicate with people. We're talking about teaching my, my four-month-old granddaughter sign language. So my daughter and I are learning the signs for different, uh, different things that, and what they mean. So it's, it's kind of fun that, and I, I think she's going to get it really easily. She's, she's teething and already trying to walk, so, which is crazy to me. I want her to crawl. <coughs> My son was one of those babies that never crawled. He just went from laying down to running. He, he skipped both crawling and walking, and he just went right to running, and he was like a little, a little, um, what are those games, ping pong games? Not ping pong, um. Oh, what are those games called? Electronic games, the old flat ones before they had video games um, from the arcade. Why can't I remember the name of that? Anyway, he was like that. He would go from place to place to place and fall down and get back up and run, run. But he would run from place to place to place. And so I want to make sure that she actually crawls and walks and doesn't move as quickly as he does because uh, I don't want her to fall and hurt herself. All right, that's all I've got today. If I can help you in any way, ask. Hit me up in the comments below. I'm going to say ask today and tomorrow because beyond that, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can, but there are no guarantees it would be as quick a turnaround time as I have now. All right, have an amazing day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye. Think of some things that, phrases that you use that make you sound the way you want to. All right.